Welkom bij de eerste persona van buiten. Ik is Paul van Kenel Brewery. Ik ben Craig van Stolman Distillery. Op uh, onze eerste persona dus besluit ons een keer gaan naar de Black Oyster Catcher. Um, Craig heeft onder andere gepraat en wil graag gaan. Het. Uh, ik heb een vriend waar werk, Fraser. Um, en Craig heeft besef dat ze een lekker vliegstrip doen en ons besluit ons wel te doen. Ja, yeah, Black Oyster Catch has been on my bucket list for a long time. Southern Point of Africa, wine farm, brewery, airstrip, wildlife. It's got everything that it needs. So come and join us on our very first episode at one of the most epic places we've ever been. Maar zoals alles ongelukkig werk, alles van plan op bij dag, weer het is samengespeeld. We konden niet meer zo de vlieg niet. Toen moesten maar die bakjes laai. En wat volg is wat gebeurt. Black Oyster Catcher is geleden ongeveer 5 kilometer van Elam in die Zuidkaap en wordt bezit en bedrijf door Dirk en Sandra Hieman. Met de aankomst wordt ons reizigers gegroet door die Black Oyster Catcher zijn honnekeners, Otis, Stella, Maggie en die baas van die plaas, Oscar. Bezoekers bij die Black Oyster Catcher kan ontspan door een van hulle smullekere pizza saam met een glaasje wijn te geniet, wat hulle hier op die plaas produceert. En natuurlijk is daar een winkel waar mensen hulle producten kan koop om bij huis te kan geniet. Van wijn tot bier en van beskuit tot confijt. Die hoogtepunt is zonder twijfel die wild wat hier te zien is. Van Ierland, Kwagga tot Seekwee. Maar eerst besoek Paul en Craig die brouwerij wat op die plaats bestuur wordt door Fraser Crichton. Een brit wat homself hier in Zuid-Afrika in 2010 kom vestig het. Welkom jullie, hallo, ons is hier samen met Fraser. Ik ga niet veel licht nie, ik ken jou. ook. We hebben een paar bieren gedrink al in ons leven al. Um, ik denk, dit om die pionisme en die story uit te hou is, uh, ik denk Craig. En hij is nog een Brit, which helps my story a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Craig is de stil dat ik ken die bier, so kom ons wees eerlijk, spring weg met een paar vraag, jy wil. Right, well I've been showing you a line-up for a start. It's, I dig the cans and the, the artwork and... Yeah, I actually okay. want to know a little bit more about what it is and who you are. And so I moved to South Africa in 2010. Um, I'm actually a winemaker by training. Uh, I moved here and there was no beer. <laughs> so I started making beer. Sad basically, time. right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, mean, you mean real beer? Real beer, exactly. <laughs> not, not, not the other, not the big macro yeah. stuff. So, um, so I started brewing all the way back then. Um, and then about a year ago, I got involved with Peter McCorran at the Spirit of the Mice, um, who are a distillery and brewery, so they own um, Spirit of Minus and Vulcan Good and Alton Hat. So Peter, the one owner, is actually a military historian. So his idea was to bring uh, these amazing stories of these, these, these sort of Second World War heroes that people don't know anything yeah, about. Yeah, largely uh, forgot. They largely forgot, yeah. exactly. And I think it's absolutely wonderful, you know, in a time when people are not in the best spirits about their country to have something to to push yeah. on is, is, is just wonderful. Okay, so Sailor Milan, um, his name comes from, he was a sailor before he was a pilot, a pilot basically. <laughs> so that's where the name comes from. So, so he, he basically had the first um, action kills, I guess, would you be killed or shoot? You know, yeah. he, he had the first, he shot down the first Germans in the Battle of Britain. So across the whole range, we try to make all of these beers really approachable. So anybody just getting into craft beer, you know, getting away yeah. from the mainstream stuff, we don't want to completely shock them. So, nice bitterness. Is that, yeah. Mm, and let's be honest, South Africa is a lager country. But Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. don't have a lager, you don't have... Lager, lager is what pays the bills. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's about like, yeah, 80%. You can dream about that. hazies and smoothy beers, all things. If, if you don't have a lager, the lights will go off. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Uh, let's do pills now. Okay, so... This is Quentin Smythe here. Uh, this, this is one of the ones that don't know so much about the story. So you'll have to... Quentin Smythe, yeah. This is definitely in a German style. And the bitterness is higher on the Pilsner. Yeah, in general, I think it's not a, it's not a Czech Pilsner, so it's not crazy hoppy. Um, so definitely, more, but more, should be a little bit lighter, a little bit crisper than the lager. Um, lighter than the lager. Yeah, yeah. Nice so, and clean though. Yeah, super clean. And then, so the lager, we're definitely pushing this one more of a sort of a heavier style German lager, where it's got a bit more of the light yeah. German character. IBUs, 30, 28. Oh, that's about 30, yeah. 30, yeah. 
Wait. And he kind of gives a bite <laughs> gun, so he has a little bar system, so the lager is, so IBUs were probably like, what was that, 12.5, 13, 14 on the lager? Oh, the lager, yeah. uh, it's about 20, yeah. Okay. 20, so now, clear me up a little bit, and then you're going to have that to IBUs, but they international bittering units. Yeah. So, you know, as you know, I see you drink, now, you begin first with the last IBUs, because as you get too bitter, begin, and happy, you can't go back. Uh, see, man, our lager for pulse, because when your smoke is then shot. En dan ga je terug naar een lager. Als je ooit iets wil beginnen of je koopt zeg maar bij een bierplek vier verschillende bieren, begin met die laatste IBU's en dan beweeg je op naar die fruity kant. Want je kan niet, als je eerst boven begint, kan je niet afkomen. Oké, okay. next. We're gonna smash the balls up. We're gonna do, yeah. we're gonna do the blonde here. I mean, this, this blonde is very, again, very approachable. So it is hopping on this, there's some new world stuff in there. It's got a little bit of a Belgian side. Yeah, it's got a bit of like a bit of Esther thing going on there. Um, I think the, the, the cool thing of why I bought up the British thing is the Great Escape. In the movie, Very famous was story. a British guy, and actually, he was a South African. Roger Bushell was a South African from nice Mars, yeah. and he led the light, Great Escape. Light, light fruity. Unfortunately, he didn't um, make it back. But I don't know. <laughs> no, but um, but, it, but very he, cool. He technically made it back because he's on oh. the can. He's on the can. That's the thing. But, it, but that's what it, you know. Choose him. Yeah. No. <laughs> to, to that guy. <laughs> But it's just another thing that I can't claim as a Brit that we led the Great Escape because the bloody South Africans got there again. <laughs> but you should get on the palate that citrus. That's a big thing. Coming from the hops of it, from Cascade and Citrus, look that just straight away that citrus lid. But a grapefruit one? Exactly, definitely grapefruit. Yeah. Definitely grapefruit. So for you as a big lager drinker, but you will probably like smash these ones. So not bigger than our size. Oh. A big lager drinker. Mm. <laughs> or color. Last one we're gonna hear is Lucas Majosi. So unfortunately in the second you world war, people of um Color weren't allowed to actually fight, but they were allowed to be there as um, stretcher bearers and sort of in you know support roles and logistics and things like that. So Lucas Majosi uh, story again, you can read it uh, on the website. But he um, he ended up saving a lot of people <laughs> on the front line, basically. Even when people said, "Look, you can't go in anymore. You can't go get anybody else." He said, "No, I'm going, and I'm just going to carry on and go." In. But this is your alley though, it's an English IPA more like tinto. So this is this is an English IPA, um, so very much more traditionally balanced towards the malts and the caramel toffee, that kind of stuff, but, but with the hops in support. So it's it's a bigger multi beer, so you need more hop there to support it as well. So it's got bitter, yeah, it's more traditionally bitter. It's than, nicely balanced. I don't like massively bitter IPAs, but I agree with you on the bitter, the, the balance on that. The bitter yeah. with, with the malt support. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not just I think this thing would also bitter. like you know, cask where you just tap it like that. I think yeah, this yeah. will be on hand pool. This will be amazing. Beautiful, perfectly like suited for that English ale strain as well. So mm -hmm. it's got a little bit more fruit but character. A, but the bitterness is there, though. Greg, no, no, it's better, but it's there. it's not all that's there. Where a lot of IPAs can just be. So I like the caramel. And that the time. caramel's a little bit pulled back. It's not like mm. hops, bitterness, caramel. It's like anybody can do that. Yeah, yeah really I know. It's, it's a balance, right? It's, it's, it's elegant. Mm. But Fraser, thanks for having us. It was my lacquer. Pleasure. Also, really, really, really good. Lovely, yeah. lovely having you here. Super impressive. Well. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a few more beers, but <laughs> see you later. <laughs>so introducing us to fraser interesting guy super cool beers with a really like a connection to south african war heroes which i find fascinating and then not only a really cool brewery but a winery as well Bye, lekker wijn uh baie afdeling het ons aan ons vrouwens oorgehandig die wijnkenners ons self kom ons kyk wat sê Lekker op die stoep by Black Oyster Catcher en saam met ons het ons verdirk, die wijnmaker Eienaar en sy dokter Jeanette. En ons is in hierdie area een beetje meer uit te vind oor jylle wijnkies, die, die cultivars wat jylle hier so doen en wat jylle um, signature wijne is. So, Dirk, vertel vir ons beetje van die area, um, jylle wijne, jylle wingerde wat jylle groei, jylle klimaat. Ok, ons uh, is so sikker die jongste, een van die jongste wijnwijke in Suid-Afrika. Just the winter is 1996 planted. We have a lot of beer. 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 We have a l
doen baie goed in ons area. Daar is ander kotie was ook, um, weet as Kavane en as Merlo's en as, wat ook, maar ek denk die, die belangrijkste deel van ons is Souvenir Blanc, uh, typeer hulle al as een elem karakter. Okay. Selfs die wereldplaat van in die buitenland, as hulle dit voel, sê is een typische elem karakter. Do you think our um, location to your location plus the sea? Do you think it has an impact on the wines and huge, the flavor in huge, the wines? Huge. So the the climate it it has a big impact on the climate. So at night it cools down, um, which has a big impact on your sugar levels. Dit maak in jylle, in, in die tyd van oes vir jylle, vir jylle soep in jou blank, wanneer kan wanne begin dit? Nee, ons begin so die middel van vier baai. Okay. En ons maak so die middel maart klaar. Maart, maart, maart. Maar, maar, wat is er met Robertson en Salem Bos? Ja, wat sien ek vroeg ja. baie, vroeg in, in januari baie keer. Op, thuis van, ja. uh, van die Mertalse soep in jou blank is al in die botel voor ek wat nou pas. Ah, ja, dat is een wijsje nou nie. Hy doen ons al een, een soep in jou wat is die vroeg dit. Ja. Ja, en daar is ook daar. En sê ek ook vir my, jylle die, is die wingerde of die druid vir jylle wijn, is dit alles van die plaats af, wat ja, jylle in? Ja. Oké. Okay. So voor en toe, um, ek sal definitief wijn van oorsprong van jylle mou, soef nie op bank en sê my om, want ek denk dat ek te doen. Maar ek sal, ander, ek sal ander, van ander areas af uh, vir die hooi in, ek het nie, persoon ek die baie hooi druid aan nie. Oké. Okay. So ek sal daarvoor sal ek, sal ek inkoop. Ek het die inkoop wat nodig is. En, en hoopelik dit kijk self koust hou, wat, um, wat basis die area van Gansbaai is. Ja net noord oh, van, van die berg tot die soort um, en specifiek Shiraz, want ek denk Shiraz <coughs> so so in die blaad het een definitieve die area karakter ja. Ja. ok, hierdie en ek het dit probeer, dit is die <coughs> ek het dit in 2012 probeer <coughs> die eerste keer gemaakt is een rechte MCC met die kaflasie so hy is gegis, sekundaire gis in die botel, drie jaar in die, in die, in die botel op sy moer voor ons om te En dit is 100% my hulle wat dit nog als uniek maak. Dit is uniek vir ja. a droe mm. te zijn, he? Ja. ja. En Tina, jy is een vonkelwijn drinker. Mm-hmm. En ek denk, hierdie, hierdie kan ons nog als een keer van boot die lijst sit. Ek heb die tijd van 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 die tijd. Ok, so ons doen een um, wat ons hier taak te noem. Um, ek het nou vir jou die cap, want jou moet nou van van cap. Dit is een 2017. En dit is kamer nie met so um, Tatsi Kavane Frank en ja, dit is die Kavane Frank. En sê, ga vir my die naam draaien, wat nog in dit? Ek doen een wit blend ook, wat is wat semi on semi op blank blend is, en ek het die white pearl genoem. Goed. En ek sal okay. een rooi blend gehad wat ek die black pearl was, en toe mag die black pearl wanneer die ook in die naam draaien. Oh, genade. Okay. So, toe denk ek, uh, en dit was aanvankelijk eerst een uh, Kavane Merlo Shiraz blend. So, dat was drie. So, is eigenlijk een kite blend geweest, toe denk nou, dit draait in genoem. Kruipen is die King of the Sea. Ah, sorry, ons, ons, ons hele label en goed werk ook terug na, na uh, to your question, approximately to the coast, in die, in die coastal um, invloed. So, dit is die twee volkies in hulle blijne en te taal als daar. En dan obviously die straat daar wat die grond en goed te... Is daar die Black Oyster Catcher? En die Black Oyster Catcher. En een Mike Verlaar. Rechter, dit is een baie speciale, sorry. Ja. Ek hou dat van. Sê, gaf my, hoe ver is ons precies hier tot by die oceaan? Wel, hier is nog net een winger pas tussen my en die see, Konrad hulle, dit is die sykste, uh, okay. strandveld. Oké, okay. oké. Oh, ja. um, maar syke is soos die kraaifeer hier vanaf 15 km. Dit is die pijlings, ja, dit is baie nog baie klaar. Toen ons daar op my gestroond was by die see, Korea, as hy door apps is in Winstel daar, en is high tide, dan kan jy die see hoor, soos raw. Ja. Dit is nogal cool. Ja, nee, ja, as jy sê sterk is, hoor jy om daar weer vry. Ons wil nou nie gister hoor, maar ek kom sê kwee. Ja. Ja. Maar ek skeer dit enige dag. Maar ek is blij jy leid kom vroeger. Dank jy leid die wijn straf, speciaal. Dit is een area wat ek bijvoorbeeld glad nie ken in die wijn district nie. Ons is allemaal gekend met Salembos en Pranjouk en Dermamel en Parel. Hierdie is heel te maal iets nie en dat is definitief speciale karakter in jylle wijn en ek dink jylle die niche daarvan gevind en jylle, jylle bring om tot sy recht. So baie dankie vir die geleentheid, dit is ja, baie daar een plek wat ek weer sal kan besoek en vir die mense daar buiten, absoluut die wijn is fenomenaal, goed geprys, die moeite werk, one stop shop. Daar dat jy een bykie meer weet van bier en wijn, kom ons praat een bykie kos. So over to the fire for a low and slow oxtail. 
Then we're going to go on a game drive. So that oxtail is going to be perfect when we get back and it's going to wrap up an epic day. Welcome terug bij buiten. Ons is hier vandaag lekker bij Black Oyster Catchers, zoals jullie weet. Ons gaan nog veel lekker mijn koos maken. Krijg wat voor ons voor. So I'm going to make you guys a golden oldie. This guy is as simple as it gets. Meat, a little bit of vegetable on the fire, serve it with pop. Bunch of friends, good beer, good times. Right, so in a menopausal pot that we have here, we're going to brown oxtail. Let's get this lekker brown. And of course, cooking on a fire is the only way to do it. Real gram oxtail. So we're cooking for ten people tonight. So we've got a huge load on the go here. And um, obviously, if you're looking for a more detailed recipe, we will supply that on our Instagram and Facebook. Um, but yeah, we're sort of doing a massive one today. So this is going to take a little bit, a little bit more. And we got Omar's. Omar's big pot here, which is a, a very important part of the ingredient. The world should be wacht at the also be near for your messy work. I can only solve books, come not after your kinds of for better very order. I get was obviously the prototype number in, so I'll see number two here. I said we've got number two here, yeah. So the Serbian kitchen knife, massively uh, popular at the moment all over the place. And I started bugging around making knives, made Pablo's first one, you can see how rough it is. I've improved on it since then, and uh, it's a great versatile knife for pretty much everything. Um, very manly, of course, so probably best for your ego. Right, we got this meat lacquer brown now. So in we go, about a tablespoon of lacquer dried chili flakes, carrots, celery, roughly chopped onions and whole garlic cloves. Get a good fry on this. For a bit. For us, Ursit, what shall you say? Minimum tight for an oxtail. Elke week must I eat that you get per hour so often an oxtail kit to make for the collection long tap. I see fat. Low and slow. Four hours minimum, I reckon. Yeah. Just give it time. There's that's the one thing you can't you can't shortcut on. Okay, so while Pablo is waiting now, now my secret to this: brown muscovado sugar. That's the sweet. Brown vinegar, that's the sour. In this case, it's about a cup of sugar and about a cup of vinegar. Give that a stir. You just want that sharpness of the vinegar to cook off a little bit. Let that sugar incorporate nicely. Rosemary in the, in the oxtail as well. A good whack of this. This is fresh out of the garden right here. Uh, Thanks to Black Oyster Catcher and Fraser's Folly. Right, we've got the pot going nicely now. Last, last thing, the good old Royco Rich Oxtail Soup. In this case, three packets of it. And this is just going to thicken everything up. It's got its own great flavor. It's a little bit of hot water here, off the, a little bit of hot water here off the fire. This will be about a liter, liter and a half or so. Just get that melted down a little bit. Get old Pablo out the way here. For schoon me, for schoon me. Get that into the pot. Just check your liquid levels, what you want here. Just, just to cover the content of the pot. Remember this is going to cook five, four, five hours. So, lots of moisture to keep it going. Give that a quick stir. Get the lid on. Really lekker. And once the lid's on, I recommend going on a four hour game drive. That's about all I can recommend to fill up that time. So as you can see, it's a good finish of the game drive. Come on back. Sign us up on the gang. Neighbors take some lekker flavors. Here's a little bit of time. 
Nós temos de levar na corta. Olha o que eu peguei, flavors. Cheers. Cheers. So one of the parts I was looking forward to, game drive time. Yes, see. Was it the very important part? It was like a lekker cooler box gepak, warm aangetrek, and I'm going to go to What's the Wi-Fi code on this land, Susan? He's like, ah, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> So we're wrapping up day two at what I think is the crown jewel of the Black Oyster Catcher. It's the wetland behind us with Ross, who's very integral in the, in the, the project here. And uh, yeah, we're going to celebrate with a, a little, little steak at sunset, cold beer at sunset, and uh, a little discussion about what exactly is going on behind us here. What would you say is the reason to reintroduce hippo to this area? Well, it's a good question because they were here originally, but, but hippos are actually environmental or eco-engineers. So they play a very important role, apart from grazing and <coughs> stimulating growth, uh, root growth. Because they walk everywhere and, and they don't swim, they mm. actually open up channels. So often in areas where there are no hippos, over decades and centuries the sediment builds up. And in wetlands, the, they become separated. So what hippos do, because they walk from the one pan to the other, they open up all those channels mm -hmm. and they encourage huh? water to flow again. Okay. And also, <clears throat> they, they defecate in the water, which adds nutrients to the water, which benefits all the animals that live in the water, the fish in there. When, what is the, the last um, recorded sighting of a hippo here before these were reintroduced? I think it was in the 1850s, eh? somewhere around there. Yeah, 150 years ago. In a while, huh? Yeah. Great. You say you're going to go like a T-bone steak here? I'm going to quickly do a little uh, steak plunky here. A little bit of rough uh, Kalahari salt, some dried bird's eye chili. Quickly on the grill there, we'll chop that up and I think we'll all just share a lacquer little piece of steak and a cold beer. Well, thank you for our sponsor, Electrical Industries, for a lacquer braaikie, like a takeaway braaikie. Easy does it, Mickey charcoal. Yeah, great little unit to chuck on the back of the back of the car, take to the beach, take it anywhere. It seems it's neat and tidy, packs up lacquer, and uh, we're gonna try it for the first time now. But I'm pretty confident it's gonna work well. Yes, Ross, thanks for having us. Thank you. Cheers, Jeff. For me, coming from the high felt. This game drive and what we saw has to be an absolute highlight of moving down to the Western Cape. Great people, great place to have a little adventure. And I think the best way to wrap this day up is around a fire with a good plate of food with good people. Yeah, I think I think what I was going to say was it's been amazing. Um, Blijf een lekker trippie geweest. Dank je allemaal bij Black Oyster Catcher en die Span, Dirk, Sandra, Fraser. We zien jullie weer. Great hosts. Thank you very much.